How would an inventory gain or loss be processed under the FIFO method? So the FIFO method is where we assume that the first items in are the first items out. And always remember, it may not be true, it's just an assumption. So we don't have to identify each individual unit. And we're applying it to all these different types of transactions. And we've been through all these rules one at a time. So we're looking at lastly now, what do we do with an inventory gain or an inventory loss? Let's work an example. For an inventory gain, it's a very complicated rule. It's different to anything that we've seen. It says use the most recent value from the in column. So let's work an example from beginning to end. May the 3rd, purchase five units of $55 total, including GST, receipt 504. Let's get rid of the GST. So get that divided by 1.1, we get 50. 50 for five units, that's five units in at $10 each. And we're going to assume they're in a nice neat pile like that just for the FIFO, not in reality, they won't be like that at all. On May the 11th, there's a credit purchase from wholesale chairs of 10 units for $20 each plus GST, so we don't worry about the GST, invoice A34. So we've got 10 coming in at 20 for a total of 200, and we are gonna assume they're in a nice neat pile here after the $10 ones, because that's the order in which they came in. Then on May the 14th, we sold three units for $30 each. This is an inventory card, so we always ignore the sale price. We just want the cost price, and like always, we ignore the GST. I just wanna know which three units were sold. Well, I have no idea. It's not important under FIFO. What I just assume is that the first three units that came in, which are these three here for $10, they're the ones that are going out today. So I do the date, May 14th, the invoice number, three out of 10, and that leaves me these two at 10 here, and I've got all 10 at $20 there. And then we get to the end of the month and we do an inventory count and it shows 15 units on hand, memo 87. Well, it says here we should only have 12. So we have gained three units, which three? Well, under FIFO, it's a little bit weird. We're just gonna assume that the three are valued at the most recent value in the in column. What does that mean? Well, let's look at our in column. We've got two amounts there. We've got $10, and $20, which was the most recent? It was this one, the $20 one. So applying this rule, we are gonna assume that the three units we gained are valued at $20. And that means that we, we had 10 at 20 and we gained three at 20, we're gonna have 13 at 20. So we're not gonna add in some of these, these $10 ones because they weren't the most recent ones in the end column. We're gonna add in these three here. So at the end of this, we should have two at 10, which is here, and I should have 13 units at $20, which is there. So just look out for that. It's the only time we use this rule. Most recent value from the in column. And we're doing this so we can now do our general journal entry. So when there's an inventory gain, I do a debit to inventory because it's going up and a credit to a revenue called inventory gain. However, I don't know the amount. And that is why we did this inventory card. It said here, we got the amount here, three units of 20, that's a total of 60. So that will be the number I do there. Very important for a narration for an inventory gain or loss. I write inventory gain, how many units in the memo number? Make sure we do that. Also, if I have the type of unit, so if it's a hat or a chair or whatever, put that in too. Uh, also, and the most important thing is we've got that document number so we can go and track it later. So memo 87. What about an inventory loss? That's a little bit simpler. We're just gonna do FIFO. So let's take the exact same example up to when we do the inventory count. So five units came in at 10. Then 10 units came in at 20. Then we sold three and we assumed it was these three uh, at the top of the $10 pile. And now when we do our inventory count, instead of uh, 15 units, we've got eight. What does that mean? Well, we should have 12. It says two at 10 and 10 at 20. That's what should be over here, but I've got only got eight, so I've got a loss. And this is much easier to do. What does the rule say? The rule says just apply FIFO. So if this was a sale, and I sold, uh, I'm gonna have four units that I'm losing now. I would take these two here at the bottom of the $10 pile, then I'd move to the top of the next pile there. And that is exactly what I'm gonna do here. I'm gonna do the date and the memo number. I'm gonna say that it was two at 10 here, and these two at the top of the $20 pile. And what I should be left with is that I had two at $10 the day before, they're gone, so I leave that blank. I don't write zero, zero, zero. And then I had 10 at 20, two are gone, so now I'm left with eight. And that's how we do it. And now we can do our general journal entry and this entry changes a little bit. It's a debit to a new type of expense called inventory loss and a credit to inventory because inventory is going down. Um, that's gonna be a credit to inventory. And now I'm gonna use my inventory card to get the amount. The amount said two at 10 for 20, 
to it 20 for 40 if I add these two numbers together I'll get $60 so that will be my entry again give a detailed narration inventory loss number of units if I know what the units are for example hats and um, that memo number is very very important so now we kind of can finish our list for the FIFO method there's the rules for valuing inventory we've done them all all so far and then we added inventory gain the rule was use the most recent value from the in column and inventory loss was FIFO. And the problem with FIFO is you go, well, it's not really FIFO, is it? Because we're only applying FIFO for sales, inventory loss, drawings, and inventory used for advertising. Just make sure if you're taking this table down um, to make sure that these three things here, sales return, a purchase return, and inventory gain, actually have a different rule. So make sure you know those and you get it all down on one bit of paper so you can sort of, when you are processing transactions, you can remember exactly what you are to do.